Hey everybody, Hunter R. Henniger here, and I love board games. Okay, there's there's much more than that, but sadly that was my best opener. So games have always been a passion of mine, but I was introduced into that non-standard category of board games when I was 12. That was around 2002, and the two games that I played were Carcassonne and Bonanza. Now, when I played those games, I was immediately blown away. I, I'd never played anything like those two before, and I ran out the next day and bought both. Now, there's been this huge evolution in the last 10 years with games. The industry, to put it bluntly, has blown up. Board games aren't those things that you take out of your closet when the power goes out anymore. They are collectibles, they're conversation starters, they're things that, at least in my case, I display out in the open and actively want people to play when they come over. So with that popularity becomes this sort of ease of access to them. Uh, it's never been easier to go out and grab a game in pretty much any category and almost any theme. And that ease of access of games has become so much more clear to me because back in 2002 when I was buying Carcassonne, I had to go to two or three game stores before I could find this obscure little German game. But now it's it's everywhere. You can order it from Best Buy. And that's awesome from a consumer perspective. But from a game designing perspective, it's never been easier to produce your own. Now, before we get into my perspective on designing games, I'll let you know that I've been fiddling around with this stuff for about four or five years. Four or five years. That's like the lifespan of a Great Dane or 22 goldfish. I've never been good with fish. So over the years of trial and error, I tossed a lot of games out. Uh, some were just a few pages in a notebook. Others were full-on play-tested prototypes that just weren't good. I'm finally getting to the point in game design where I'm more confident with my games and I'm starting to be excited about some of the stuff that I'm working on. Don't get me wrong, they, they still need a lot of work. I just know that the few that I'm working on right now aren't steamy piles of cardboard. This whole video is an intro of sorts. I think it's best I go over what I'm trying to achieve with this channel. One, I've been procrastinating and puttering around with ideas for far too long. I think moving forward, I needed a place to voice my introspection. For me, writing down my thought process paired with talking to you guys about it, it will help me immensely with my game design. Also, it would be nice to put my expensive film school degree to use. Two, discussing my experience with game design. I'm gonna go over everything I've worked on up until this point. I'm no prodigy and I've wasted a lot of time getting here. Hopefully some of what I discuss on this channel will shave off some of the design time for you guys. Like I said, I think writing or talking about the process of game design is something that all designers should do. It really allows you to dig deep and justify why you've added certain elements in your game or why some mechanics are there and not others. So the game I'm gonna be talking about pretty regularly is a trick-taking game that I designed, and I'm gonna go over sort of why I chose to do that. I'm gonna talk about the theme I chose, I'm gonna talk about game mechanics I decided to bake in, I'm gonna talk about solo playtesting, and I'm gonna talk about where I'm at right now, and that is playtesting with groups. So once we're caught up, I'll be able to stop speaking in past tense, and I'll give you sort of a week-by-week -week of my progression or pitfalls. I hope that you guys will be able to take little tidbits of information, uh, sparks of ideas, and make your own game. I still consider myself relatively new on game design and I'm learning something every single day from blogs, from podcasts, from board game geek. There's so many good resources out there, so I think the only thing stopping you from making a game at this point is you. There's at least a few places I know of one game crafter that you can just put your game on there and sell it and it's just print on demand, kind of like Amazon Kindle is. So depending on the scale of what you want to do, you can make a game and you can sell it and no one can really stop you. Let's not go too far down the rabbit hole of publishing just yet because uh, we're a little far off from that. So one thing that I wanna make sure that I do with this channel is be bluntly honest with everything that I'm working on. I know that there can be a tendency to uh, want to hold the cards close to your chest in terms of game mechanics or game ideas. I wanna take a writing approach with this where you can you talk about your ideas. You talk about it in a way that you're confident and not worried that you know someone's gonna steal that idea because 
An idea is just an idea. If you have a good tagline or plot for a movie, that's great, but that that's a paragraph. So talking about that plot or that idea is, is having this confidence that you are the best person for that idea, not really hiding it away and shying from it and worrying about people stealing it because they might do a better job. People will either see that you're good or at the very least they'll see that you're passionate about it. But the games I'm designing aren't gonna be the only thing that I'm open and honest with you guys about because I feel like people need context as to who you are or what your life situation is when you're doing something like this, something creative. That could be how much freedom you have to work on that project, where you're at in terms of financial support, what your family life is like. These are all factors that come into game design. Don't get me wrong, I don't think that you should compare yourself to anyone. I just think that when people speak of success or failure, a lot of the times they don't give you enough context um, as to why either of those things happened and that's not really teaching you anything Like I said, I love games and I'm on this path to designing them So if I can help one person with their design in any sort of way I'm gonna call this channel a success one last thing before I go the game I'm designing and I'm gonna be talking about extensively on this channel is Something that I don't plan to pitch to a publisher at this point that may change. There's no guarantees but at the point of this recording, I'm planning to run a Kickstarter in November. I've never done anything like Kickstarter. It's a lot of research, a lot of research. So I'm nervous, excited, slogged down with all the articles I've been reading. But yeah, well, I'll, I'll talk about the prep I've already done and will continue to do. And I guess if you're kind of on the fence with that stuff, uh, this might give you some idea of what goes into it. If you'd rather go with a publisher, if you'd rather try to kickstart it. So the business side of it all will sort of be this B plot looming in the background of this channel story. So that's it. I'll try to keep this video short. I think the next video I might briefly discuss on how to take that leap from gamer to game designer and where you should be at in terms of gaming and when to do it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next designer days.